Welcome to The Joy of Music. Featuring as hostess, Diane Bish, the first lady of the organ. Praise ye the Lord. Praise him in his sanctuary. Praise him with stringed instruments and organs. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Diane Bish. Welcome to the joy of music. We're so happy to have you with us today because we have one of America's all-time greats, George Beverly Shea, America's beloved gospel singer. And today we're going to feature hymns on our program. Hymns are so important to all of us because they allow us to express our faith in God and our innermost feelings. And so I hope that today you'll just sing along with us as you hear some of your all-time favorites. I would like to begin by playing one of my favorites. I'll hail the power of Jesus' name.
And now I'm so honored to introduce my special guest for today, George Beverly Shea, America's beloved gospel singer. And he's going to sing for us, The Love of God. measureless and strong it shall forevermore endure the saints and angels song we can only see a little of the ocean as we stand on the rocky shore but out there beyond the horizon there's more there's more we can only see a little of God's loving, a few rich treasures from his mighty store. But out there, beyond the horizon, there's more, there's more. Could we with ink the ocean fill, or were the skies of parchment made? Were every stalk on earth a quill, and every man a scribe by trade, to write the love of God above would drain the ocean dry, nor could the scroll contain the whole, though stretched from sky to sky, O oh, love of God, how rich, how pure, how measureless and strong, it shall forevermore thank you for singing The Love of God, Bev Shea, and thank you for being with me on The Joy of Music. Oh, it's a great privilege, Diana, it really is, and that lo The Love of God is one of my favorite old songs. Is it? I think that people are looking for a love today in the world, and they look everywhere, it seems, but to God, mm -hmm. and I think that that song just carries all of yeah. the truth in it, that, that Christ and yes. would have us know that the How love true. of God will meet our needs. Oh, true. Someone asked of another uh, what do you know about God? And came back the reply, I don't know very much about him, but what I do know has changed my life and uh, his love through his son, Jesus. I think, you know, when you sing, I have always felt the love of God. And I uh, think that that really can not only change your life, but it changes your music. Mm. Because when you sing, I feel, and I know the audiences feel the love of God. Oh, um, thankful for that, that that's well, true. I really am. You know, the, the love of God and uh, the wonder of it all yeah. and how great thou art yeah. and I'd rather have Jesus are sort of your theme songs, aren't they? Uh, yes, I sing them quite often, I really do. Is, is that because you, you love them so much or because they're requested by people? Perhaps I don't know any others. <laughs> oh, I know. No, I don't. You have made about 46 See, recordings? 48 with the RCA and then Five with word, yes. Then you, you know a lot of music. <laughs> what you know, you in the recording studio, you sit it up on a stand. <laughs> Put well, your hand up to your ear sometimes. And are they all gospel songs that you yes, recorded? I did and one, uh, one wedding album, and that was I enjoyed doing that. You know. And now those were all songs about love and. Oh yes, and right, sure, and right. And Even old promise me and. Uh, things oh, like that. <laughs> is that still out on the market that people well, could I don't buy? Know. It's a little bit old now, but... <laughs> well, those, those songs are still being sung. I have a copy at home, of course, you know. You know, you, know, uh, you wrote I'd Rather Have Jesus, didn't you? The music. You it's wrote the music. The music. Uh -huh. uh, Rhea F. Miller wrote the beautiful words. Yes. 
You know, you told me we were in, in uh, Dallas together not yes. long ago, and you told me a story of when you were young and you sat down and you played yes. the melody for I'd Rather Have Jesus. Yes, I was 23 years of age working down near Wall Street in New York, taking a whole bunch of vocal lessons every week, you know, and knowing Christ as Savior, but not knowing what direction life was going to go for me. Mother and Dad were interested in this. Mother had a way of kind of preaching through little notes around the house and the, mm -hmm. on the shaving mirror and such. And she knew I'd see this poem we were on the piano. So she wrote it out for some reason in her own hand. And put it Maria was on Miller. the piano? Yes, on the piano. I come down quite early on a Sunday morning. I read for the first time, I'd rather have Jesus than men's applause. I'd rather be faithful to his dear cause. I'd rather have Jesus than worldwide fame. I'd rather be true to his holy name. And I just... I just uh, had expressed that in song and uh, got into a good low key and, and that's what happened. Uh, Do you think that that's where you really got into to gospel, uh, singing music? Well, of course, I was singing a little bit <clears throat> in church before that, uh -huh. but uh, it was sort of an act of dedication, uh, thinking of those words and, and putting a music to it and become almost a theme song. Uh -huh. you know. You know uh, like most women, I like to go shopping. And I was just thinking really, this week. You? Oh yes, <laughs> I was just thinking this week. I I went shopping and I bought something. And I came out of the store and I looked at what I had bought, and I thought, well, you know, this is really nice, but I'd rather have Jesus ah, than this, beautiful. because, um, of course, that song I think of so often because mm. you know the world. Mm. They go out and they, they buy things, mm. and many people give their whole life just to, to obtain things. Things, yeah. And those things just mm. don't sustain us uh. like Jesus does. Mm. And um, I realize that so often in, in my own life that, that those things will not just bring the joy that, yes. that we're looking for. Well, so often after a day of activity, like we put our head on the pillow, uh -huh. you think over the day, what's transpired, and, and it'll come to you then if, mm -hmm. when you're a Christian. Mm -hmm. I'd rather have him, or he's precious to me. And uh, I love thoughts like that. Well, I would like for you to join me, or perhaps I should join you mm -hmm. in singing, I'd rather have Jesus. Well, I never would dreamed you? I was gonna have the privilege of having Diane Bish play well, for I'd, me. Well, <laughs> I'd love to accompany you. So why don't we do that for All our right. viewers now? All right. than silver or gold I'd rather be his than have riches untold I'd rather have Jesus than houses or lands I'd rather be led by his nail pierced hand than to be the king of a vast domain or be held in sin's dread sway. I'd rather have Jesus than anything this world affords today. than lilies of rarest bloom. He's sweeter than honey from out the comb. He's all that my hungering spirit needs. Oh, I'd rather have Jesus and let him than to be a king of a vast domain or be held in sin's dread sway. I would rather have Jesus than anything this old world
not long ago I was in Dallas, Texas with Mr. Shea, and he is one of the best storytellers. <laughs> if you sit with him for any length of time, you will hear the most wonderful stories and fascinating stories. Not and really. Bev, well, it's true. <laughs> and you told me a story about the same song that you just sang, I'd Rather Have Jesus. I, I think it was about a young man in France. Would you yes. tell that to him? Yeah, the young GI, American GI. Uh, he was in the ongoing advance, and this, this town was pretty well shot up. And he noticed a church, which a couple walls were standing. And he, being an organist, a fellow who loved to play the uh -huh. organ, he thought, would that precious instrument be destroyed? And he found himself in there, and he hit the switch, and it worked. And he wrote me about it and said he played. I'd rather have Jesus. And he just <laughs> you mean the organ was standing it alone was, in the church? It, it, somehow the church it played. Had been bombed it, and yes, the, organ, the played. organ was still playing. Isn't you know? that wonderful? And he played uh, bombastically the, the chorus, you know, then to be the king of a vast domain or be held in Isn't sin. Isn't that amazing? I'd rather have Jesus, yes. Is that a song that you always sing at your concerts? I'm afraid so. Probably the next to the always. last one, you know. Uh -huh. And, uh, and you still sing concerts all over the country now, every week, don't you? Yes, Kurt yeah. Kaiser and I have done about 35, 36 of them so far, and not all this year, but uh, as, as time is available between Mr. Graham's crusade meetings, why we, we do this. Yeah. You know, I woke up this morning and I was reading in the Psalms, and I read the verse about, He shall give His angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. And it really struck me this morning because... Yeah. Um, it, it's so amazing to know that God loves us so much yeah. that, that He gives to us mm -hmm. angels to take charge over our lives and watch us mm -hmm. in everything we do. And I remember hearing you sing that piece not long ago. Uh, Kurt Kaiser wrote words of music and called it I, that. And he used, of course, the New Testament words for the chorus. And uh, it's a very beautiful song. Isn't it wonderful that we can really be aware of the fact that He watches over us. Yes, well you know that the Ethel Waters piece, his yeah. eye is on the sparrow. <laughs> yes. And you know, uh, sparrows have never been very interesting to me. Uh -huh. uh, probably one of the least interesting of birds and yet yeah. God watches over yeah, every yeah, sparrow. Yeah, beautiful. Remember how she used to sing and I know he watches we. <laughs> we? Yes. Beautiful, you know. You knew her quite well, didn't you? Yes, yes. She sang I, in, the, in the Graham Crusades. And I had and the privilege of singing at her memorial service oh. out in L.A. You know, I want to ask you about how great thou art. I think, uh, besides, I'd rather have Jesus. That's probably that is that is your theme song, and mm -hmm. I, I think that you probably brought that to prominence in this well, country, didn't you? Well, perhaps I had a hand in it. We were now walking. you're being humble, <laughs> I think. Well, uh, 1954, walking along Oxford Street in London, I'm, a gentleman came up. I knew Mr. George Gray, and he says, "Oh, I, I didn't I didn't give you this song last night at the Crusade. I want to give it to you now." And it was How Great Thou Art, a little octavo size uh, sheet, and it had the Russian hieroglyphics, is that the way to put it? Uh -huh. And English, and then of course the melody. And I looked at it and I saw those words in English <laughs> and uh, knew they were beautiful. Uh -huh. And the tune looked simple. And then Cliff received his, Cliff Barrows received his uh -huh. that evening. We got our heads together on it and we decided we wouldn't start singing it. In that crusade, we wait till the next one, which is Toronto, you know. Mm -hmm. And then RCA tells me that I did probably the first one to do it on record. That was 1956. Mm -hmm. But there are others who've done it so beautifully. And, uh, well, I think that that everyone will think of you when uh, when they hear how great thou art. It's been a great privilege. Uh, most people probably know, Diane, that it was written in Sweden mm -hmm. in 1885 or 1886 by Carl Boberg. He was a preacher and also a senator betimes, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, he wrote these beautiful words in Swedish and employed one of the melodies of the day. And it got in around all over Europe and into Russia. And a Mr. S.K. Hine, a Londoner who was a wonderful linguist, uh, he, uh, he went over into Russia in the early 40s and uh, heard this for the first time, was so impressed with it. Mm -hmm. So we're indebted to him. Right. Is this uh, the, the most requested piece, probably, that, that you Well, it, it perhaps has been. Mm -hmm. We used to sing it almost every night in Mr. Graham's meetings. Crusade. I remember you saying it with the choir and the choir yeah. going up on the high F or whatever oh, it is it, on the It's a great end. thrill to was, sing with those. It was really a thrill. But we probably don't do it every, you know, we don't mm -hmm. do it that often. I wish someone else would write, or we all could. Uh, I, another hymn of worship as strong, mm -hmm. you know, as beautiful. 
for well, you. Well, I want to thank you so much for being with me, and I'd like to, to uh, sort of end this with your singing, How Great Thou but Art. Could I just tell you how much I personally appreciate your playing of the organ? Well, thank you. And it's been nice to get to know you and uh, be on your program. It's well, a real privilege. Thank you very yeah. much. Yeah. When I in awesome wonder Consider all the worlds Thy hands have made I see the stars I hear the rolling thunder Thy power throughout The universe displayed Then sings my soul my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great God, his son, not sparing, sent him to die. I scarce can take it in that on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and he died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art. Thank you, Bev Shea, for singing How Great Thou Art. We've been listening to our favorite gospel songs, and I would like to end the program today by playing another one of America's favorite hymns, Now Thank We All Our God. This hymn came about in very dramatic and moving experiences in the life of Pastor Martin Rinkart, who lived in Eilenburg, Saxony during the Thirty Years' War. And during that war in his town, more than 8,000 people were killed. And he was called to do the burial services for more than 4,000 of these people. His wife was also killed during this war. And even though Pastor Rinkert went through all these terrible and sorrowful experiences, yet he came out with a confidence in God and a love for God that kept his faith alive, and he wrote the hymn, Now Thank We All Our God, which I would like to play on the great Rafati organ.
Thank you for joining us on The Joy of Music. And I want to especially thank my very special guest, Bev Shea, America's beloved gospel singer, for sharing his music and his life with us. Next week promises to be a very special program. It's going to be the combination of a great organ and a great orchestra. And I'm going to be playing the Concerto in G Minor by Francis Poulenc for organ and orchestra. You won't want to miss it. <laughs>